Hello, friend, and welcome back to the Jabril Show. I am your host, Jabril Youssef, and we're coming to you live and on time from St. Louis, Missouri. We've got a great show for you today. We are going to be talking about free speech, censorship, decency, and all the little places in between. Before we get there, I just wanted to share a little bit about my week. I hope you've had a good one. Um, you know, it's been a lot of work. I've been working a lot, pretty much 24 seven, preparing for my release, the release of Glitter on January 12th. It's going to be a big one. I'm so happy with how this song's turned out. We have a video that we shot in one night in Nashville. I'm just so excited to share this with you. And I was able to perform Glitter for the first time with the finished track on Tuesday night here in St. Louis. I found a, an open mic called Word Up. And uh, it was just a very pleasant experience. I met a couple comedians, some other musical artists, and experienced a night of wonder around other folks cut from the same cloth. I also had an interesting experience with a comedian named Dion, who I met, and I was expressing a little bit of uncertainty about my own situation, my own dreams. And Dion really just spoke some encouragement into me, into my life and my walk and my step. Uh, you know, just, he just said, you know, you seem to have it from just, just from, from looking at you from from feeling your energy, I, I feel that you have that something. And he said, not all people do. And uh, it was it was really nice, you know, a really, um, what's, what's the word I'm searching for? You know, just a, a kind of comforting, uh, unique, experience you know you don't have these kind of interactions with people all the time and so i have learned to appreciate them when they come along and uh, it just reminded me it was a reminder to keep doing what i'm doing uh keep fighting for what i believe in and keep working toward my dreams and i hope that maybe you've gotten a moment like that this week as well. This episode is brought to you by my Patreon community, where you can get behind the scenes content, access to all my demos, progress updates, all that stuff that nobody else gets to see. Also, if you sign up at the friend level, you're going to get all of my musical releases free of charge, including 2021's Wild Love. So please, we'd love for you to join us. Every little bit of support goes to move me along my way and allow me to keep releasing music, produce this show, and all the other little things that we bring to you along the way. John Fitzgerald Kennedy was killed by the United States government. Now, I could be wrong on this one. There have been conspiracies going back decades, essentially saying the same thing. And I don't think it's absurd when you look at all the other clandestine activities that the United States government has been involved in, from Malcolm X to Martin Luther King to COINTELPRO to 
there is so much that would seem to back up this idea. And we've seen just recently the Biden administration released more of the JFK files, still not everything, which begs the question, what do they have to hide? Now, again, could not be the case. But if it is, I don't think this is the only thing. I think in the years to come, we're going to see a lot more come out about what these shady organizations we call governments have been doing behind the scenes for a long time. And it wouldn't surprise me one bit. If you haven't yet supported the fundraiser for our friends in East Africa, please consider making a donation today. Our LGBTQ friends are under assault in the Kakuma refugee camp and in Uganda, where Children of the Sun, another friendly organization, operates. Now, Children of the Sun is just able to make the final payment to get into their new location after being evicted. We were able to help them a little bit with that. That is a big victory, and we're rejoicing along with them. It's still tough for our friends in the Kakuma refugee camp. It's every, every day presents new obstacles. And Intazio, who's in Nairobi, who's making a go of it on her own, she needs food. She needs some help in order to be able to get a place so that she can actually get a job. So if there's any way that you can help today, whether that's digging into your pocketbook, whether that's sharing this video or the link in the description with friends, family, a church or political organization that you're a part of, we'd be so grateful. So what is free speech? Well, of course, it's enshrined in the First Amendment to the United States Constitution. But a lot of people really blow this idea out of the water. Essentially, what the Constitution says is that no government uh, institutions or anything along those lines can take away your freedom of speech, your freedom of expression, your freedom of assembly. But that's limited to government organizations. And I think we have to keep this in mind in this conversation because often people mention it, they talk about it like anyone should just be able to say anything they want. And that's not really how it works. What freedom of speech means is that the government is not able to intimidate you, to imprison you, to bring charges against you purely because of something that you said. Now that's good for me, considering what I <laughs> said about JFK a little bit earlier in this show. And that's a great example. I could be wrong about that. I could be right. Only time will tell. And what freedom of speech does, what the First Amendment does, is make sure that the government of the United States can't come and get me just because I said that they are responsible for assassinating one of our presidents. Now, in a lot of other countries, a lot of other places, that might happen. You, the government might be, you know, ready to knock down that door and come get me as we speak. Hopefully, that's not the case here. That's exactly why these protections are in place. And it makes America, the United States, 
one of the greatest places to live on earth at the moment because we have core freedoms such as this. Now there's another aspect of this debate that revolves around whether you want to call them right-wing or conservative folks feeling like there are certain things that we can't say anymore, figures of speech, particular words, or maybe just ways of expressing ourselves that, that they say, they say that's wrong. We should do away with all this political correctness. We should be able to say what we, we really think and feel. We should be able to say whatever we want. Now, I agree we should be able to say what we think and feel. We should be able to say whatever we want. Eh, there's a little bit of a line there. I think we should be able to say whatever we want. That doesn't mean that what we say, that when we say whatever we want, and perhaps it's offensive or combative or confrontational or maybe just flat out mean that there shouldn't be any consequences for it. And this is essentially what the argument's been. This is essentially what they've been asking, particularly in context of Twitter, which is a private company, not part of the United States government, right? Uh, and the idea is that private companies are not bound by the same rules, that they can, in certain ways, do whatever they want, so that if you say something which very well might be protected by the First Amendment, so the government can't discriminate against you, well, a private company could say, you know, that's against our terms of service. We want to make this a nice place for all the people to come and hang out. And because of that, you can't be here anymore. That is not abridging anyone's right to free speech. Now, the alternate side of this, you know, when we talk about wokeness or this movement, perhaps, if you want to term it this way, toward, toward decency, toward sensitivity, toward... Uh, humanity and honoring people in their unique experience, not, uh, you know, do, doing and saying things that make them feel uncomfortable or that are aggressive toward them. There is a very, very fine line here. And there's so many variables at play in this conversation, right? Isn't that why it's so complicated? Why we have people who have very different views on it? Now, I will say, I am completely, unabashedly, unapologetically anti-censorship. As an artist, someone who's about expression, as someone who does this show, as someone who sometimes talks about things that are a little outside the normal social conversation that might push the boundaries of what some people see as acceptable speech, I cannot in good conscience say that anyone should be silenced. In fact, I believe that a robust political, social discourse can only happen when we are all being truly honest with ourselves and others. If we're silencing ourselves to seem more socially acceptable so that other people won't know exactly what we think, but then we're still 
doing things based off of that ideology that we have, that's not a good place to be in. Why would, why would we want to create a society like that? Isn't it healthier in the long run for all of us, even an especially marginalized, disadvantaged groups, to get all the nastiness out? You know, racism, homophobia, transphobia, bigotry of all kinds. Isn't it just better to get it out on the table and say, hey, this is the nastiness. This is the ugliness. This is what I think. This is what they think. This is... Then we can actually talk about it. Then we can actually say, why do you think this way? Walk me through why you think this way. Okay, you, you don't think black people should have rights. You don't think trans women are women or that people should be able to, you know, identify based on the way that they feel. Why do you think these ways? Because when you ask a true bigot where their views come from, they can't tell you. It becomes clear that it is merely stereotyping that it doesn't come from anywhere that is based in experience. Maybe, maybe sometimes, maybe sometimes it is in small ways. And then we can get to that and we can address it. And sometimes People that say things that might seem ridiculous. Have a reason for it. In fact, don't we all have reasons for the things that we say and do? Whether we acknowledge it or not. Whether we can put a finger on it or not. If we inquired, if we only inquired, if we were only more curious. In fact, John Stewart recently gave this viewpoint, almost exactly this viewpoint in relation to Ye and the anti-Semitic things that he's been saying. And John Stewart, of course, famously is Jewish. And he says, he said, I don't think it makes sense in the cases of Kyrie and Ye, to say, you can't say this. It's silence, we're gonna silence you. No, it's important to bring it out, to open that wound, to let it breathe. Because of course it's the air that closes that wound. So why are we afraid of viewpoints? Well, because viewpoints, because speech often lead to action. Indeed, what is a stronger indication, a more uh, powerful impetus toward action than speech? Things that are said, whether it is from us or from someone else, are often, if not almost exclusively, the reasons that we act. Now, the ways that we act can be different, but is oftentimes in response to some kind of speech. Now, where does that speech come from? That speech, of course, comes from thoughts. So we have thoughts, we have speech, we have action. It's a chain. And the thought, the idea, is that the action, the action is a result of the speech. And so that if we can only shut down harmful speech, 
it won't lead to harmful action. Well, again, speech doesn't always move to action. If we can address speech that may lead to harmful action before it leads to harmful action, without silencing it, well, maybe we can avert that disaster. But I would say we must truly start to focus on the thoughts and not in a Orwellian fashion. Of course, none of us want our thoughts to be read or policed. That, in fact, would be the greatest oppression and slavery, be not to be able to think freely. However, there's a flip side to this conversation, and it resides in each and every one of us. Can we ask, what if I made my thoughts pure? What if I attempted to bring only that which is beautiful and helpful and wondrous into my mind? Because if we can purify our thoughts, will that not lead to better speech? And if my pure thoughts have created pure speech, thoughtful speech, compassionate speech, curious speech, will that not lead to better action? today. We appreciate you coming and sharing this space with us. If you haven't yet, please drop a like, leave a comment. If something piqued your interest or rubbed you the wrong way, we want to hear 
from you. If you like what we're doing, subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell so you get notifications. We are here every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Central, and we'd love to see you again. If you can carry some of what we talked about into your week, try to be a little more discerning with your thoughts and your words and your action, but also don't be afraid to push the line a little bit. Say something that you're not sure what the response might be. We've got to live on the edge to keep it interesting. Until next time, please keep living your life to the absolute fullest. Stay free. And no matter what, don't ever stop being you.